Ladies and gentlemen, get ready because tonight is going to be an epic night on the Josh Nolan and Oliver S. Full Throttle Racing Show. Hashtag one on YouTube. Get your fire extinguishers ready because this is going to get really hot and heavy tonight. So with us tonight, we have 500 plus feature winner and nine time USMTS champion Kelly Shyrock with us on the show tonight. Welcome to the show, Kelly. Well, pretty cool. You, you I, I, I'm, I'm learning how to do this Zoom thing, I guess. So <laughs> you kind of yeah. walk me through that. So Kelly, um, you okay? You own Skyrocket Modifieds. You were born here in Estherville, Iowa. You live over in Fertile, Iowa. How did you get started in racing? Uh, just uh, didn't know anything else at a young age. You know, uh, racing with my dad, and uh, you know, we just. Uh, just loved it from, I guess I didn't know anything else because our whole family was a family deal and we raced and, uh, and then uh, I started working for Bob Harris in my senior year in high school to figure out what I would do until, you know, do something here until I got old and, uh, and here I'm still building race cars a whole lot of years later. Okay, so how did you come about getting the number three on your race car, Kelly? So my number three come from my dad. So my first car that I raced in 1984 uh, was a number five. And then, uh, unfortunately, he passed away uh, that year. So the next year, I ended up taking the number three number um, in honor of my dad. Okay. So, Kelly, who is your hero and your um, best friend in racing? Oh, my hero was definitely always my dad. I think of him every day, pretty much, uh, you know, when you lose your best friend and your mentor and your dad, when you're just 20 years old, that's pretty tough deal. But, um, you know, there's just a lot of people, you know, along the way that's helped encourage me to, you know, do the things we like to do. And, uh, um, we just, uh, like I said, we just, have to figure out what we're going to do in our with our life before I get too old here pretty soon. <laughs> oh, yeah. When you first started in racing, did you have to work hard to get where you're at right now? Working hard isn't even the – it's an understatement of really what I've had to overcome. Um, you know, again, following – trying to follow in my dad's footsteps. You know, he, I, I, he, he was a really good race car driver and, and didn't have a lot of money he had a lot of good people that helped him too. you know, my God, he worked construction job and my mom was a stay at home mom raising three kids. So there wasn't a whole lot of money there, but somehow he prevailed and he won a lot of races and, uh, you know, God, you know, my mom was, my mom, my mom's tough. And, uh, you know, when she made a statement to me one time about, um, she asked me, are, are you sure you want to be a race car driver? you know, after watching me race the first year or so she, you know, I didn't really know what she was really trying to say other than, you know, I really wasn't very good. I really sucked really bad and, uh, you know, just hard work and prevailed and the determination. And, you know, I was able to associate myself with a lot of great people and, uh, just somehow determination, you know, whatever I am as a race car driver, you know, we've worked real hard to get to that status. Okay, what what goals did you set for yourself, Kelly, in your racing career? I didn't really have any goals. I, you know, my number one goal from racing is is you know I didn't have no money, so you know do the best I can, load the car in one piece, and that's still my motto in today's world. Um, do the best you can. The fastest car doesn't always win the race. Load that car up in the trailer and as much in one piece as you can, and uh, move on to the next night. And uh, you know, it's it's worked for us. We we pride ourselves on finishing races, and uh, you know, you know, finishing races. You know, to 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 finish first, you must first finish. So, <coughs> excuse me. So you <coughs> you got to uh, you got to finish the race, and you know, you can't do nothing stupid and. You really try not to, um, excuse me, one more time. <clears throat> you know, my dad always, I didn't get a lot of encouragement from my dad because the first year I raced, you know, he lost his life there, at, you know, at, right at the end of the, my season championship uh, night. And, uh, you know, he said, always never try to put yourself in a position to make somebody else have to lift for you as a race car driver, because 
the other drivers might lift and they might not lift for you. So, you know, and I think I've kind of tried to use that philosophy through most of my racing career here. So how do you deal with the pressures of racing, Kelly? Well, uh, it's, you know, right now it's not so bad because, you know, the financial side of it, you know, when we were traveling on the road and spending mega bucks trying to compete with all the boys on the road, <clears throat> you know, it was very tough financially. You know, I, I've got some good people helping me here now. You know, we've had good people back then, but, you know, it's it's not quite a big a burden to try to compete. And again, yeah, we just try to do the best we can. And you know, again, try to load that thing up in one piece. And, you know, uh, I've said it from the beginning, um, you know, this feature win I win tonight might be the last feature win I get. You never know. And, uh, you know, we just take each one and be happy about that and, you know, desperately try hard to win the next one if we can. So what is your most favorite victory you had out of your racing career, Kelly? Oh, there's lots of victories. I, I You know, I think there's, uh, um, you know, winning probably, I don't know if you can see the trophies behind me. I got, I got my trophy from uh, King America. I got a trophy from few trophies from deer creek for the jamboree i won the big jamboree once um there's just a lot of a lot of special wins i mean i've worked really hard to win you know a, a weekly race at algona you know we've worked sometimes harder to win that race than a bigger race so people don't understand just because it pays more money it isn't always about you know being harder to win you know winning winning is easy losing is what's really difficult because when you're winning you know, you didn't get a flat tire, you didn't get run over, you didn't blow an engine, you didn't get claimed, you know, you, you you know, all the, all the above stuff. So, you know, when your night goes good, it's really pretty simple. You know, it's, it's, it's dealing with the nights when they aren't going good for you that you got to learn to adjust and try to overcome and then move on to the next night. So how did you gain so much knowledge with racing there, Kelly? Well, again, I, you know, come drawn, grown up with my dad and, uh, you know, I was probably setting my dad's valves on his late model motor when I was 12 years old. So I've been around this a long, long time. And, you know, working for Bob Harris, you know, out of, you know, I, it was my senior year in high school in 1982. I started working for Bob, you know, in, in almost 20 years with the Harris organization. And then, oh, was it 2001, 2002, we started the Skyrocket business with um, Eric Kirschbaum. So that's been going on now for you do the math. It's been going on quite a while. So I, I've, I've, you know, I've had a few other jobs along the way, but overall just um, welding up race cars and being part of race car building is what, what has really consumed my whole life. So I, I think about it as I get older, not too far away from social security. And uh, <laughs> um, I guess I'll figure out what I'll do when I get old and, and maybe uh, not, uh, you know, racing 80, 90 nights a year. So we'll, we'll, we'll so see. What is it like to, what is it like to race at Deer Creek, Kelly? Deer Creek is, you know, really, really an awesome place. You know, back in the day, we, we were very successful up there. Um, it, uh, it's a track where you got to have lots of momentum. Um, you know, you can't be afraid of the wall because you, sometimes you got to, you know, put the quarter panel up on the fence. Um, you know, lots of momentum, a lot of speed, unbelievable to go in the infield and watch a race from the infield, you know, from the outside, it, you know, they definitely go fast, but when you're on the inside there and watch races from the infield, it's really amazing how fast that joint is, you know, when you, when you're that close to the cars on the track. So what is it like to, to win races, Kelly, as a driver? You know, probably for me when it races it's it's not to show that i'm a better driver than you by no means for me when it races is about show showing the people that have supported me that you know, people that sponsor you they don't always you know it's it's more of a friendship kind of business yeah some of it's corporate but not very often it's more personal and because they like you and you know, you just, it's for me, winning is showing, showing uh, my sponsors that their money was kind of worth it to a certain point. And two, whether I was re representing the Harris brand or the Skyrocket brand, you know, showing people that 
our product can win races. So winning races for me is not really so much for me. It's for my sponsors and showing my customers and my friends and or whoever else that, hey, you know, this this brand here can win races. So, you know, it's not I've never once thought about that. I'm a better driver than you. Um, there's a lot of good drivers that probably don't have the chance, you know, to get in a, a, a car of Mike Halper. You know, other drivers are just as good as we are. So, um, you know, we just try to run the best we can for the night, um, try to be fairly clean. And I think I am and uh, um, get get to the next night if and see how that outcome is if your night wasn't so good the night before. So what is it like to race the Salute to the Veterans Tour, Kelly? You know, that was pretty overwhelming. You know, um, didn't really know what to expect going in. A lot of a lot of people, you know, looking at the car. Um, pretty overwhelming to have, you know, the couple cars that we've had with the stock car and the modified. Um, a lot of <clears throat> soldiers um, that had been, you know, that lost their lives in the in battles, you know, to to protect that flag and serve serve us. And uh, there was a lady at Elgona that came up, and uh, I had. In my number three on my modified, we had um, the names of, I don't remember how many guys lost their lives. And uh, the lady come up, went to the driver's side, went over to the passenger side, and you could tell she, she had found a name that she knew, and she just put her head down. And you know, it was very emotional. And uh, she walked off. And as she was walking off, I went and I went and intercepted her and you know heard the story and um that particular one was uh a, was a neighbor boy um and uh she told the story that uh uh the boys were uh uh skinny dipping and some girls went down and took their clothes and and uh they were over a train trestle and uh, took their clothes and uh, ended up throwing the clothes into the water to the boys. And that was one of the boys that was, um, you know, these are like 18 year old, you know, a lot of 18 year old boys. So very emotional. You know, we won, we won, uh, we've gotten to give away quite a few rifles to the veterans. You know, if you win the race, you get to pass over a rifle, a yeah, pretty cool deal. We've got, I don't know exactly how many we've got to do. I think three, four, I think, I don't know, quite a few. And it's pretty cool. I get goosebumps and uh, we won that one at Spencer with our modified. And, uh, you know, we had, I think we had a lot of help in the driver's seat to uh, help us get us to victory lane there. So pretty cool. Really cool. So what was it like to, to race the USMTS series? You know, USMTS is, you know, back in the day, it was just a bunch of us that, you know, was running weekly racing and kind of was tired of the engine claims and, you know, not necessarily wanting to race for more money, but the person that we were racing for, you know, wasn't very much money and then you could lose an engine. And then, you know, when that US, it actually started with USMS, which was uh, uh, Sheckler and uh, Doug Sheckler and... Now there's a couple of guys. They work for IMCA, um, a Hawkeye Racing News, I believe. And uh, you know, if we were able to travel and race, and you know, I always wanted to do that with the late model um, with my dad. Um, never really dreamt of myself running a late model and traveling. But then after we, you know, we've we were we've 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 had fifty some engines claimed from us, and you know that got to be pretty old. And when they put that program together to go on the road. I think it was like in 94 or 95 or something. Um, you know, it was pretty cool racing for 2000 to win. And, uh, you know, it was only 20, 30 races and, uh, we were able to travel around and race a modified in all sorts of different venues. And, you know, we, we did that for a long, long time. So it was, we met a lot of wonderful people along the way. That's for sure. So Kelly, okay. Being a race car driver, what's it like to race the Boone super nationals? Uh, Boone is Boone. You know, I, you know, I have sold, I don't know how many engines there we've run second, uh, uh, 
a few times. We've run third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. You know, we've I think we finished in every position, probably on on in in the main event. Um, pretty cool to be a part of it. Again, being there is business wise is yeah we want to win the race, but we want to showcase that you know when I worked for Harris that our Harris cars were good, and when I when we have our own company of skyrockets that the skyrocket cars were good. And, uh, you know, there was multiple t chances we had of winning that and it just never, it's just never happened. And, uh, you know, we've had some good success there and just some really bad luck there. But, um, you know, the best part of Boone is no question is, you know, pulling out on that racetrack in the main event and just seeing all the people that's just stacked up as much as they can to see, see you race, you know, probably the, the most amount of people we've ever raced in front of was, you know, possibly Boone, but, you know, we got to race on the Bristol dirt the first time they put dirt on Bristol. And I don't know, you know, Bristol is just a huge old facility with all the seating there, but they said there was like 40, 50,000 people. And it looked like it was, you know, three fourths empty, but, um, you know, just pulling out on the track and seeing all the people, um, that's pretty cool. It gives you a little bit of, uh, of goosebumps when you're out on the track for sure. So out of your nine championships with USMTS, what was your favorite championship you won with USMTS? Oh uh, shoot, probably our when we the year we won, man, we won like eleven in a row, and we won like about everything. You know, that's a hard season not to forget. And you know, we would, you know, when we won, my the most features my dad ever won was uh, thirty two races in a season. And uh, I think we ended up with 40 plus wins that year, 42 or 45. I can't remember now. And, uh, it, you know, as we're going to our next race and coming home, it's like, you know, before we got even that high, you know, with that many wins, it was like, you know, I'd really like to at least tie my dad's record after we got, you know, in the mid twenties and then we got to, we beat his record of 32. And then it was like, you know, we never took them for granted, though. We're going to go try to win the next one. We're going to go try yeah. to win the next one. And, you know, we just caught a lot of people off guard there with setup and stuff. And, you know, we we're very successful. And, heck, the next year we we won uh, 20, 28 or something times. And we finished second to a Skyrocket like 22 times. So we had multiple different Skyrockets winning races. You know, I think Crone won the championship one year in a Skyrocket. Uh um tim downlinger won the championship in the skyrocket and you know so we had some a lot of success there and you know we're still i think multi we're still the main uh uh still holds the record for most wins of 180 some with nine championships uh rodney's got his fifth so you know he might he, you know he's a good racer he you know he may get up on that but uh you know, i don't think anybody will ever you know, one thing I can small about, I don't think anybody will ever beat the 11 in a row. So, you know, yeah, we had no friends. Um, now even our, 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 in, our, uh, customers were getting pretty tired of it. And, um, you know, I was, you know, there's no reason why somebody should win 11 in a row, you know, yeah. and I kept telling Stale, you know, it's not my fault that we're winning 11 yeah. in a row, it's the competitors, you know, there's no reason why anybody should win that many in a row. You know, we yeah. just we had a really good setup and, you know, I'll never forget. We finally got beat um, in Memphis, Missouri by Mike Kena. And uh, I don't even know where we finished third or fourth or I don't even know. And, you know, it was, it was kind of a relief to actually get beat, of course. And yeah. uh, I'll never forget Mike Kena. If you know Mike Kena, he's just, a, he was, we had a lot of fun back in the day. And uh, he was like, he was just kind of strutting around like an old rooster out in the yard. He's like, yep, just call me the streak ender. So Mike Hanna was definitely the streak ender for us at that point in time, for sure. So do you have some really good sponsors on your racing team, Kelly? I got some really good sponsors. Um, you know, they, you know, everybody that's on board again is, you know, there to help, help us out. You know, racing, you know, in today's world, it is pretty darn expensive. And uh, so, yeah, all my sponsors, um, you know, from, you know, from the beginning of time, I, I, I want to do something coming up. Uh, this year will be our 40th year racing. And I want to do something. And, you know, I wouldn't say I forgot about a lot of my sponsors, but along the way, you know, new ones have come aboard and old ones have kind of, you know, 
want by his side. So I want to try to, I'm going to do some sort of post on, and try to have people just recognize that they've helped me to my success somehow or something. We're going to do something. I don't know what exactly. And we're going to, my wife, uh, try to come up with some sort of a cool paint scheme for our 40th anniversary too. So, um, yeah, it's a long time. People ask how long you've been racing and now I can say it's been a long damn time for sure. So Kelly, what's it like to win 500 races in your career? You know, I, I, I remember my first one as if it was yesterday, um, still got that trophy. Um, so many along the way, um, everyone is special. Um, you, you don't really think about it. You know, it, I, again, I don't expect to win. I, I, you know, I, there'll be one time when I won't win again. And, uh, um, we just, there's nobody that tries harder than our team, myself of not giving up. And there's sometimes when there is a time where you just do have to give up sometimes, but, uh, you know, uh, we just, try really hard and uh associate yourself with good people and um you know success hopefully will come you know if you keep working hard but you know it's really tougher in today's world to be successful because you know i was i mean when i saw a race and i had to race against uh, people that raced with my dad i mean wayne larson and mark noble and ron jones and uh steve Coe and and uh um oh, from uh, rochester um uh, denny anderson I mean, these guys had 10, 10 plus years of racing experience on me when I started racing, you know, Mark Noble, my God, he's, he's the man. And, uh, you know, I, I always say, I, I bet you I've run second to that guy. I, I always said a hundred plus times, you know, that guy could be out leading, get involved in a wreck and lap car, spin out, go to the back and still come back and win a damn race. And, uh, um, you know, I think Mark Noble has made a lot of people who they are, you know, racing against good people. You know, if you're worried about competition, you shouldn't be in racing. You know, I, I had to learn, I had to race some pretty fast cars, you know, you know, I'm probably the Wayne Larson or the, the Mark Noble or the Ron Jones to the kids growing up now. But, you know, I mean, she had Mark Noble. I don't even know how many wins he's got. What has he got? 800 or something. <laughs> You know, so he, he, he was, he, he was pure talent. I think I put him in the same group as my dad, just pure talent as a race car driver. And, uh, you know, he, he taught us, you know, to be successful, you, you know, you can have the best equipment, but you got, you better learn how to drive too. <laughs> Otherwise there's no way yeah. you're going to out a caliber a driver like himself. So Kelly, when you worked at Harris, I had a question for you. When you worked at Harris, did you help build Earnhardt Sr.'s modified that he raced down at Hawkeye Downs? Oh, most definitely. You know, there's pictures that shows up every once in a while with, if you see the helmet with the orange on it, that was me in the seat there. So, um, yeah, oh yeah, we helped, we worked on it. it was, you know, uh, there was a lot of people that was involved with that operation. And, uh, you know, so I got to run that car, practice it. And then uh, we run it in the 100 lap race. And we was going for the lead with it. And um, the third place car uh, <laughs> run into a lap car and uh, pushed him into me. We jumped tires and uh, I hit it with the front, spun around, hit it with the back, spun around, hit the front, pretty much destroyed the car on a, a, a lap or two to go. So, oh yeah, that was a pretty cool experience to be involved with him for sure. So what was it like to, to deal with Earnhardt Sr.? Was he a pretty nice guy? Well, we really didn't get to know much. But he was, you know, obviously intimidating. You know, I guess that's, yeah. in, I mean, no pun intended. He's an intimidator. You know, he was like, you know, just a mob of people around there. And he's like, who drives this car? And it's like, uh, I kind of like raised my hand like me. Well, tell me a little bit about it. And I said, well, uh, uh, four speed, uh, second gear, fourth gear, brake adjusters there pretty much go do it and you know we had practiced all day and we got it pretty darn good for him and i think the first couple laps he drove it he went like three tenths faster and i'd went all damn day and uh you know uh it was pretty cool um we got uh he won his little race i don't know who how many how many guys were in on that race but there was quite a few different nascar guys there and he pretty much killed them in that race and then uh, i got to race it and uh, 
the pitcher, um, I, I, I kicked myself in the butt. Um, I'm looking on the wall, the pitcher here. Um, I have with Bob Harris and Bobby Jacks, the engine builder and myself. And he had given me that pair of gloves that he wore in that race car and won that race with. And, uh, I, uh, you know, that was pretty darn cool. Right. Getting yeah. Earnhardt gloves. And then we had went down, we were good buddies with Kane Schraders and we went down and, uh, spent the weekend of the 600 and we actually went out on uh Schrader, we went out to Earnhardt's place and he was bulldozing. He was building his new house then. And I actually got them gloves signed. And uh, yeah, it was, it was that next, uh, next year, two years later or so. And uh, I drove in a, I had driven a late model. A, a guy um, had sub, uh, put me in a master built late model and, and I drove two years and I sucked. I wasn't very good and we didn't do very good. And, but this guy was super, um, um, uh, really, really good and spent a lot of money on me and he was a huge Earnhardt fan and, and, uh, me being just appreciative for what he did. I, I, I give him them pair of gloves. So, um, yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, oh, yeah. that was so Kelly, if you could give any driver, um, any advice when they're starting their race career, what would you give them for advice? Go as fast as you're capable of going. Don't overdrive the car. Try to associate yourself with good people. Um, do the best you can. Load the car in one piece. There's always tomorrow. Just the same words of advice my dad gave me. So, you know, you don't have to win. You know, do the best you can. Second, if that's what the car is, that's capable. And that's all you got for the night. Just take that second. I see too many people overdrive their cars and get their stuff tore up and uh, wasting money that, um, you know, it's it's uh, just a waste of money if you're going to do things that are stupid. So be smart and have fun. Try to have fun, especially with the amount of money and just try to associate yourself with good people and, you know, try to, I don't like to use the respect word, but, you know, get the respect of people that, you know, you're willing, you know, you're rookie, you're new, you're learning and uh, associate yourself with them people that can help give you some answers that you're looking for when, if, and when there's time you do have questions. So do, is any of your skyrocket cars racing the gateway nationals this weekend? We actually got one down there. Um, Tim Love, the tire demon guy. Um, okay. Ward, uh, Ward is driving his car down there. So, okay. Yeah, we don't, we don't okay. do much with the uh, with the um, UMP stuff. We got to don't have very many cars in the UMP world, and uh, okay. you know, really fast. You're gonna need that, and uh, yeah. And, and, or I don't know. It, we, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how you know um, that four four car is pretty fast. So he's a pretty good driver. So maybe. Oh, yeah. Pretty cool to see if he can, what how what what he can do down there. I mean, I just watching the late models tonight and watching the modifieds, and uh, you know, I I have no interest of you know it's a little smoother tonight anyway. So I'd maybe be interested in that, but rough track racing is not my forte. So I have, a, I have absolutely no interest at all in racing at the dome. But that yeah. slicker stuff, I think I I would like that, but. You know, as I get older, I really like the slicker, smoother, slower action versus that wide open around a cushion kind of racing. <laughs> I so, can do it if we need to, but I don't like to do it. <laughs> so, Kelly, what's it like to race the Midwest Madness Tour then? You know, just getting a lot of nights in a row. And, you know, you're racing different competitors, which is kind of cool. You know, that's a few, I don't know, what, six, seven nights in a row. My record of racing is 23 out of 26 nights. So we race 23 at 26 nights. So racing consecutive nights, you know, we had some really good crew guy, Carl Beatty and Lionel, his brother. And, you know, when we were doing a lot of racing, we've had a lot of people helping us along the way. You know, I have right now, Ryan Colehouse, man, he's just takes care of my car, my modified, um, a little more hands-on with our business. Now we swap partners. I got, um, a new, a new partner in Jason, uh, breeze and you know a little bit more responsibilities there and and ryan just takes care of my modified to the point where i barely even even have to work on a darn thing so 
Um, okay. Racing consecutive nights is just being prepared, you know, ha having your spares, <clears throat> having parts, and, um, you know, being prepared for the next night as best as you can in consecutive nights of racing like that. <laughs> so with your racing components business, do you guys ever go out to the PRI racing show in Indianapolis? Uh, we used to. We, we went out there a few times. <clears throat> but for us, you know, we've pretty much got our vendors that we have. You know, all the cool stuff is with the Internet nowadays. That cool stuff comes out pretty fast. Um, you know, we we our vendors that we are direct with, you know, we've been set up with them for quite some time. Um, so, yeah, it's fun to go hang out and bump shoulders with some, you know, big wigs and all. But uh, for me, um, I'm still the guy welding up these cars. So for me, I, this is our busy time. We got to, you know, I can't take time off to go. Uh, you know, it's 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 seven days a week for us working. And um, at this point, we, you know, we got to get our cars done so guys can get out there and hopefully win some races. Okay. So, Kelly, do you have anybody else you would like to send a special thank you out to for helping you get this far with your racing? Uh, just, you know, I, you know, all the, all the people that's helped me along the way, um, you know, all the people, all the crew guys that's have helped along the way right now, Ryan Kohlhaus, he's my man. Um, but probably the biggest, the biggest one is my wife. I mean, without her, I would be totally, totally screwed. She just takes care of so many things for me. And, you know, especially with the business wise and, you know, having the hauler loaded and, you know, making sure that my fire suits wash and I have, you know, it's, it's pretty magical in my house. Um, I, I throw these dirty clothes over here in this basket and the next day they're in this drawer and folded and put away. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's pretty mad. I've, I've got, I, it's pretty magical here. So without her, I would be totally screwed and just, but I got so many people, man, that just helped me along the way, you know, that uh, I couldn't do it without them. And, you know, we're, at no point did we ever think we would get to 500 wins. Uh, everybody says you need to go for 600. And that's like, I'm not going for nothing. We're just going to take what we can. And hell, I think we're at 540, 550, 5 something. I don't even know. My wife keeps track of it. We had a, a wonderful guy to keep track of it for me up to, um, let me check here, up to uh, 300, uh, Bob Patterson and, and he passed away and he kept track. He, he kept track up to 300 for me. And then he said, I was on my own. So when we got to 400, we knew we were where we were at. And then we got to our 500 to win there, you know, uh, uh, at Algona with the stock car. And now, like I said, I don't even know where we're at. So I, it, it's a, it's a lot of wins and it's pretty special and, you know, pretty, pretty blessed to, be in the position I'm in to be able to say that, you know, not too many people can win a hundred, let alone 500 wins, but um, we don't ever take anyone for granted and we try hard and, you know, maybe if I can keep doing this long enough, I am getting old, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> Sh 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 Schrader has a, uh, uh, some, some cool uh, uh, little quotes he uses. So um you know, at 6.2, you can start drawing Social Security. Um, I'm at 5.7 going to 5.8. <laughs> so um, I'm not too far away from I, – yeah. hell, I thought people that were 40 were old, let alone 50 or almost 60. So I guess the old adage, if you slow down, you get old. So um, hopefully I don't slow down anytime soon. So has your son Bobby expressed interest in racing at all or not? Uh, he did, uh, kind of, but he's really more of a hunting and fishing kind of guy. So and then, uh, you know, I got three wonderful grandkids that uh, consumes a lot of his time. So, you know, just not near enough time or and not near enough money to uh, to be able to do that. I mean, I, I don't have no money. I, I, I work. For, I'm a working man. So. I just got a lot of wonderful people that's helped me along the way to get to where we're at. So yeah, he's, uh, he, uh, he had saved up some money to, uh, possibly get a, uh, a race car and, uh, uh, 
he decided that he wanted a, a gun that he was looking at. And, you know, if it flies or swims or uh, runs, he's pretty good at all of that kind of stuff. So, um, okay. Okay. And I wouldn't say, you know, it's a great life that I've run, but it's, 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 you know, definitely uh, tough to try to figure out how you can keep up with the Joneses on a uh, budget that's, you know, not even close to them. But again, hard work will it prevail in today's world. Probably not as easy as it did back then because hard work could prevail. But in today's world, it just takes a lot of money to, you know, to be successful. And you better have, uh, you better be stepping in the right jeans <laughs> to have some help with, uh, um getting uh fast cars so you can win and there's just no there's just no um i call it cherry picking back in the day you could maybe go to this track that didn't have mark noble wasn't there and you could maybe win but there's no cherry picking today whether it's in the hornets or the front wheel drives or the hobby stocks or you know go rain go run the b mods and have to run against matt luft every night you know uh kobe you know kobe fat and you know, uh, um, all the, all the hot rod guys, uh, Alex fat and, you know, you go, go race them guys. You know, it's not that they don't have talent. Um, they're fast and, you know, the stock car world, you know, there's a lot of good stock car guys and, you know, um, some people criticize me for being a stock car, but a lot of people really, you know, I've helped people go fast. I'm the Mark Noble, um, you know, to win a stock car race to, you know, to outrun that three car, you better have your ducks in a row. And, uh, you know, people have done it and, uh, you know, makes their program better. And um, it, it'll, it, if you're a true race car driver, you're not afraid of competition and you welcome, you know, you know, if I see somebody that's won four or five in a row or super fast, I want to go race them, not to prove yeah. that I'm better than them, just to see where we stand up against that level of competition. You know, and not once would I ever say that I, you know, I'm a better race car driver than you because I, I'm not. We just we try really hard and we try to work on our setup and try to get a fast setup to to go fast. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, Kelly, it's my pleasure to be a part of this racing world with you guys because I love talking to your race car drivers, hosting hosting the racing show here. It's I've been a racing fan for 30 years or better, and I'll tell you what, it's it's no job I would ever trade in the world. No, uh, it's, it's a, you know, we, we get all pissed off at some drivers sometimes, but you know, really there's not too much we wouldn't do for most, most of the guys, you know, I, I want to get along with everybody. And, uh, you know, we've had our problems with certain drivers along the way in the last 40 years, but it, you know, if, if they, if they needed a tire to compete, come to my trailer, I'll give you a tire, you know, you need a rim, you needed, you know, this or that. You know, people know my trailer is pretty well stocked with parts. And if you don't have it, there's probably a damn good chance I've got it in my trailer, whether it's a tap, a drill, an easy out, a grinder, uh, whatever it is, everything, anything to fix your race car. You know, as you're traveling up and down the road, you got to finish races, you know, and my trailer is stocked to the point where it can about fix about any problem you got along the way. So what does your racing schedule look like for next year, Kelly, for 2024? You know, Mike with Lake Mills has been unbelievably awesome for us. You know, he he was going to put together a second stock car last year, and he asked, do you want to do that, or would you want to open open modified? And I was thinking, hell yes, I want to open modified. So he, he puts no pressure on me, which is unbelievably awesome. Um, and maybe eventually if we, if we suck, he might put a different driver in it, but <clears throat> so we've got two fresh engines. Well, Kevin Stoa, we broke our one from my, my main engine builder in, 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 in Texas, Dick Sweat. And then, uh, Mike bought a used motor, used engine of a, of a Kevin Stoa engine. And, uh, you know, it had some nights on it and we, we run it about 20 some nights, 25 nights. And, um, he, uh, said, go get it fresh. And so we're gonna have two fresh bullets. Um, he said, you can race it five nights or 50 nights. So we got that to play with. Um, we entered, I don't know why we entered that hundred thousand win race up in, uh, fountain city coming up in, uh, what is that? May, May, June or whatever. Um, 
we got our stock car that we'll compete with. Um, we got our IMCA car that is, we got it going really good at the end of the year. So we'll just kind of race where it makes sense for us in the traveling portion of it and business wise. And, uh, you know, so I think we, we won, uh, 16, 17 with the stock car. We got six wins with the IMCA car and we got, uh, one win with our open car. So, um, We'll see. I, I don't really have anything specific picked out, but, uh, you know, maybe run in a few more open shows. Uh, I don't know that we are capable of winning one, but we keep racing it. We, we're not giving up. We might, we'll see. We, we get the right situation. We'll see. You know, them guys are just really super fast. And I think back on, you know, um, when we were racing it, that's what everybody thought about myself. So um, we were at Mason City. We made both USMTS shows, and uh, I went up to a redraw. I didn't even know half the – I didn't even know but one guy there, and I told uh, – I think it was uh, – um, who was doing the announcing? Um, racing Dirt guy. Uh, um, ah, darn it. Getting terrible with names. Anyway, he's like, I don't know any of these guys. And he says, well, I guarantee you they all know who you are. So, you know, it's it pretty cool um, to be put on that – uh platform um i guess as i get older it's more of an honor than it was back you know when we were racing for sure <coughs> the usmts show in fairmont coming up this this uh, summer yep i see one of them up there um you know we'll see what we'll if we end up running that one Pro probably going to try um you know we're, we'll run you know for us in this area it's pretty tough you know we got thursday night at elgona if we choose to go back there, hopefully they get the track. It sounds like they're really working hard on the track. So hopefully we can get back there. Um, Friday nights, Brit, but then our Saturday nights is kind of, you got to go to Boone, um, you know, a long ways to go for one night. Um, we can go to Worthington. That's a long ways to go for one where we could go before Fairmont and Worthington and make a swing out of it. But, you know, so it's kind of opened the door to Deer Creek, which is an hour, 15 minutes away. Fairmont now is pretty close. Webster City's hour, 20-some minutes. Um, Fort Dodge, if they open back up. Um, so qu quite a few more options for us with the open car to be able to run that. So um, Mason City, obviously, just down the road. <clears throat> so we'll uh, see um, – but uh, we'll race it and see how competitive we are again. And uh, I don't know, just having fun. So that's the main thing. Um, you know, Mike's uh, allowed me to just kind of have fun. And uh, hopefully, you know, we did get one win with that thing, which was pretty cool. We got to race with Al Hina. You know, a lot of memories with Al. And uh, um, hopefully we can get a little faster and maybe a little more competitive when the big boys come to town. Okay, thank you very much, Kelly, for being on the racing show with us tonight, talking to us about your racing career. It's, it's our honor to have you on here tonight. I appreciate that, and uh, we'll uh, we're, so we'll post something on our page coming up with maybe our 40th anniversary paint scheme or and you know what we talked about earlier. So we thank you for having us, and uh, we'll see you somewhere along the racetracks. I'm sure. Yep, thank you very much, Kelly. I'll have you step out. I'll give a little racing news update, and I will talk a little bit to thank you in person. You betcha. Thank you. Thank you. You bye bye. Bye bye. So I have no idea how to get out of here. Um, should be out? able to just should be um, able to just exit out. Well, let's see. I think I'm still there, ain't I? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty computer illiterate, you know. Yeah. But I'm Xing out. All right. Am I gone? It should say it should say no. It should say on their leave meeting. Are you there? Yep, I'm still there. It should say leave meeting on your screen, Kelly, and then you just hit leave meeting. All right, let me see here.
I probably got to go back to Zoom because I have nothing on my screen now. Zoom. Okay, so I, where where would that be at? Um, it should be uh, if you click on your screen, it should be under maybe participants or up in your. It says, it says leave, and I pushed that, but I didn't leave. No. Uh, Try one more time. Leave. Yeah. Leave me. There we go. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, that was five hundred plus winner and nine-time USMTS um, champion, Kelly Shyrock, owner of Rock, Skyrocket Racing Components. Um, definitely awesome race car driver. We've spent many years behind the wheel. It's been our honor to have Kelly Shyrock on the racing show with us tonight. Um, I would like to thank, um, let's talk a little bit of racing news there for you. Gavin G. Money Bochelle has re-signed to drive the 25 for Rackley War um, uh in the late model series next year. So congratulations to Gavin Bochel. Um, the Tulsa shooter was fast approaching around the corner. And I'll tell you what, uh, um, they've got a lot of entrants down there coming uh, that are, that are going to be down there at the Tulsa shootout. Uh, I'll tell you what, one of the Bynauer kids is going to be down there racing. Definitely Mason Bynauer, that is. He's going to be down there racing the Tulsa shootout. Um, you got a lot of people going down there for that Tulsa shootout coming up. Um, this weekend, they're racing the Gateway uh, Indoor Nationals down in St. Louis. Good luck to all them drivers racing on that. Kenny Wallace and everybody racing that. Um, also, I'd like to say good luck. Have a fun weekend to our friend, um, Tony's uh, racing interviews, Tony Calusa. He's down there um, videoing the races down there and doing driver interviews. Um, but with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to thank our sponsors, Dirt Track Race Cars and the company, dirttrackracecars.com. For all your racing diecast needs, go snag those racing diecasts up. They've got five 164 scale sprint cars out there, the 8D, white 8D car that Doug Wolfgang drove in 1989 and won the Knoxville Nationals in. They have the orange 8 car he raced in 1990, and they have the 29 Weikert Lifestyle car that Doug Wolfgang raced and won the Knoxville Nationals in in 1985. They also have the 47 of Dave the Dude Lasoski, Casey's General Store Gil Center car that he raced in 1994, and they also have the one Nance Sammy Swindell car that he raced in 1982, all in 164 scale. They also have a racing club you can join to uh, to be the first ones to be notified of the new racing 164 racing sprint cars coming out, 164 scale racing sprint cars coming out, and also, ladies and gentlemen, they have. A, the classic stock cars and modifieds out there in 124 scale in the pure white at paint scheme. That way you can design them yourself. So go snag all those up at dirttrackracecars.com, Dirt Track Race Cars and Company. Also, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank um, <laughs> Brody Manning Motorsports. For being a part of this racing show with us and also we would like to thank um new england hemophilia association and walking with Wayland Waylon page that is wayland has got some pretty awesome adventures he does so go check him out um if you would like to sponsor a racing show or be on our racing show feel free to email us at jjnolan151 at gmail.com or you can call or text us at 712-209-7138 but with that being said ladies and gentlemen you have a good night and continue living life in high gear and doing amazing things on that racetrack, you race car drivers, and continue being a race amazing racing fans, all of you guys. So have a good night from the Josh Nolan and Oliver S. Full Throttle Racing Show, hashtag one on YouTube.